Hi, hey Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Today, I want to talk about determining the thickness of your table saw blade. And you say, what's the big deal in that? But actually, in order to cut small pieces accurately, you have to set your table saw off. And for the way I do it, which I will show you probably in the next video, exactly how to cut accurately small pieces on your table saw and you can cut it cut it accurately go use it then say oh I need one more I can come back in just a couple of minutes I can set up and we cut another piece identical to that with accuracy and do that every time so it's kind of handy to be able to know how to set something up and cut it accurately in order to do that you absolutely got to know what is the thickness that the blade is cutting on your work in other words the curve and I've watched so many people talk about how they determine the thickness of that blade and I've not yet really seen anybody do it the right accurate way and once you see this you'll understand what I'm talking about most of the time they do it very easily by just measuring the blade with a, a caliper. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to turn you down so you can see the top of the table. And so, what I have here is I'm actually using a seven and a quarter inch blade. I just put that in, and I'll tell you, um, when I first put a new blade in, I like to know what is the thickness of that cut that it's creating because there are times when you need to know that. It's critical to know exactly to the thousands of an inch or to the sixty-fourth of an inch, whatever your standard you're using in your shop. It's important that you know what that is cutting at all times. So with that new blade, I'm going to determine what is the thickness of that blade. And I'm going to do it the right way. The wrong way is very simple. I see guys take the caliper, they put it on one of the teeth, and they measure it, and they come up with a measurement. But I'm here to tell you, eh, that is not accurate and it doesn't work because these blades sometimes are offset, just like on a handsaw, just enough that if I measure this one, this side here is cutting on this side differently than this one is. So just measuring one of the teeth, you're just never going to know what it's really truly cutting. And then there's those that say, oh, just cut a kerf. Put your blade down, cut a kerf through, and measure the kerf. So now you put that in there, and now you measure the kerf here. Well, I'm here to tell you that eh, that's not accurate either. So what is the thickness of that blade? What is it really taking out in the way of material on a cut? Well, let me show you how you figure that out. If you go back four or five years, probably, Matthias Wandel, Yes, it's pronounced Matthias, is my understanding. Uh, somebody the other day I saw YouTube, and there was a visitor on one of my YouTube subscribers that I watch all the time, had somebody on there, and his name was Matthias. Uh, I don't remember his last name, but he pronounced his name, and he pronounced it Matthias. So, I don't know what his name really, how you pronounce it, but pronouncing his first name is about like trying to pronounce my last name. <laughs> so... If you look at my last name, you'll know what I'm talking about. So anyway, I'm going to call him Matthias from now on, and hopefully that is correct. If not, hey, Mr. Wandell, give me a call. Tell me how you pronounce it. I would appreciate it. So, But anyway, years ago, he set up a little caliper dial on a block of wood with a magnet on the bottom, and he uses this to dial in his fence to an exact cut. And it works real well. And all you do is you just put it right up next to there. Slide it up where you want it. The magnet will hold it still. Then I can zero out the dial. Now if I want to move it a quarter of an inch that way, then I would just move it two revolutions and down to the five. And when I'm done, lock it down, and I know I just moved that fence exactly one quarter of an inch. So knowing that, let's find out what thickness that blade is. So first thing we want to do is we're going to zero out our board, 
Then we're going to move our fence exactly one quarter of an inch and then cut a piece off and measure it and that will tell us what is the width of that saw blade and what it is it what is it actually cutting. So let's do that. First let's zero it out. So I bring it up here. Let me get this back. Bring it up to where I know it's going to shave the edge of this. And let's cut it. This is now zeroed out. Now I want to move it over one quarter of an inch closer to the blade. So I set this down and I'm going to set this to zero. Let's move it a little closer. And let's zero this out. Now let's move it over one quarter of an inch. So I loosen my black my fence. Uh oh. So now I got it set up. Bring it in just enough. Dial in dial it into zero. Now let's move it over one quarter of an inch. Loosen this up. Bring it around two revolutions. That's point two. Go to the point. Go to the O five and lock it down. I just now moved my fence exactly one quarter of an inch. So now I'm going to cut my board again. And that will tell me what is the exact thickness that blade is cutting. I moved it a quarter of an inch. If I measure this and subtract it from 0.25, I'll know exactly what that is cutting. So I'm going to use my fractional caliper. I prefer it over the digital. We'll go over that one of these days. Why? But for, for now, if I put this in here and I measure this, it is exactly 3 sixteenths of an inch is the measurement on this. I moved it over one quarter of an inch. Guess what? That blade is cutting exactly one sixteenth of an inch. So now you say, yeah, all right, sure it is. So let's find out. I am now set to zero. So I'm now set to zero again. So let's zero this out. And now I'm going to move it over one eighth of an inch. If I take off one sixteenth of an inch, then that should give me a one sixteenth of an inch cut. So what is one sixteenth of an inch? That's a point zero six two five. So if I have two of those, that's a point one two five is an eighth of an inch. I think that's what it is. Now you know why I used a fractional one instead, but let's just call it that. Since I'm using this dial indicator, I'm going to move it over 1.25. So now, so I start moving it, and I move it over 1, 20 thousandths, and, and then 5 more thousandths. And I just moved it 1.25. Oops. Touching. There we go. Now let's cut it. And what's this piece going to be? I moved it over an eighth of an inch. So this should be one sixteenth of an inch now. So if I take my caliper and measure this, whoops. And it measures one sixteenth, measures one sixteenth of an inch. And I have to tell you, I cut these out the other, earlier today when I was kind of playing with this to set up to show you how this all works. And I cut these three out at one sixteenth of an inch also. 
So if I lay all four on the table and butt them up to each other at this point, and if I feel across them, I'm going to tell you, that feels as dead on as I can be between all four of those. So, having to know what your blade height, what your blade thickness cuts can be critical. And if you want to cut pieces the same, and I don't have to cut, I don't have to cut anything and recalibrate and recut and recalibrate. What I can do here very quickly and simply in just a matter of one minute, I made my cut to zero out my, uh, I zeroed out my board, set my caliper up, and I moved it over. Now if I want to cut another sixteenth of an inch piece, all I do is I, I bring this back, set it to zero again, and now I'm going to move it. 0.125 again. So I move it one, one, two, five. I make my cut so I can come back a half hour later or I can do it immediately while I'm doing all of this and I just cut another one exactly the same thickness as all the rest of them. So it's that quick and easy to be able to cut one piece or cut 50 of them once you set up. And using this method of your dial indicator and moving your fence incrementally, you can do just that. So now, the one thing you have learned here, I hope, is that there is a wrong way and a right way to determine what is that blade cutting when you cut it. How much is it taking off of your wood. And once you set up, once you know what that is, I can come in here anytime I want and I can cut a piece down to even a 64th of an inch if I really wanted to. I can cut it down to a 64th of an inch of accuracy with this and with some kind of dial indicator. So. Now one more thing, as I told you before, I can use the decimal system, use my calipers that are all to the thousands of an inch and that sort of thing, but I have to tell you, my tape measures, my rulers, everything is done with 16, 30 seconds, 64, it's my anchor jig, everything runs off a of fractional. So I tend to want to be fractional. So what does that mean? I know that that blade is exactly one sixteenth of an inch. I bought this caliper here, which does up. I can see, and it does um, fractional as it does it instead of digital, instead of decimal. And so, what that means is that I can see a sixty-fourth of an inch, which means I really, if I wanted to, I can judge one twenty-eighth of an inch if I want to. That's as accurate as I think I ever probably want to be in the shop cutting wood. So, I tend to use this one. The thing is, what if, what if I want? I only had this in the shop. I don't have one of these set up. Well, this is easy enough to use too. Let me show you real quick how to use this to do what we did with this. So all I do is I'm now zeroed out. So I'm gonna just use that, take that, to use that to my advantage. And I'm going to set this to one eighth of an inch and lock it down. Now I'm going to bring my magnets on a board with this vise in there. And I'm going to put this in there. Make sure it's sticking out over the here. Now let's take this and bring it up until it's touching. Now I'm going to take, loosen my nut, bring this back to zero, and I'm just going to lock it down for grins. Now I'm going to bring my fence over to this one. So I tap it over until it touches, and make sure that you hold down on this when you finish tapping it up there. I know that now that it's there where it needs to be. Lock it down, move it out of my way, 
Make my cut. Lay these all out. And I'm going to tell you, I can't tell any difference in those. And I did it with that caliper, that dial, um, dial caliper, instead of using this one. And I just made the same dimensional cut accurately on my saw. So that's how you do it. And just move it one at a time and using the zero factor. I'm set to zero. So all I have to do now is come back, set this back up. What's my dimension? I want to move it. I want to move it a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to set this to one quarter plus a sixteenth. Lock it down. Bring it up to my piece. And now I'm against there. Now I'm going to zero this out. Hold this down and bring my fence over to it. Whoops. I'm going to do that until I get that out of the way. And I'm holding down on this and I can feel it when it hits. So now I'm set. Move this out of my way. Make my cut. Make my cut. And I'm a quarter inch. Accurate, quick. No thinking about it. Each time I cut the piece, it takes me a half a second to reset the thing and cut another piece. But I can cut all day long. I can come back tomorrow and cut a dozen more and they'll be accurate, just as accurate as the ones I cut today. So, I hope you learned something. Hope you learned how to use your dial, your dial calipers for setting your fence or even using your dial calipers. I also hopefully you learned how to determine what is the width of that blade, what's it cutting. Because that is important to know too. So get to know your blade. Sometimes you might even want to give them a name. Call them by their first name. They always like that. But more importantly, you have to be familiar with that blade to use it. And so make sure you know that going in. And if you do, you can do things like this very easily and accurately on your table saw. So anyway, I want to thank you for stopping by. I hope you learned something here today. If you like this video or you learned something, hit that like button. It helps me out and I really appreciate it. Uh, most importantly though, come back again because we're nowhere near done. Thanks. We'll see you.